Yes. Trying to run a few plays. You know, love the sun. I'm gonna do a few sun staring videos, man. Cause you know that's my thing. You know, if you're not able to, like I say, do these yogas and all these meditation, I would recommend spend a lot of time in the sun. It transmute your cells. It takes them from E1 solid cells to E4, which is ethereal cells. You know, your, your, your melanin will have like life to it. It's dead now. And you're using lotion as if, as if it's sun. And lotion ain't sun. Look at all the chemicals you put in your body. Think about it. Everything that, pick up your lotion. Go get it. I'll wait. All right, now read the ingredients on that shit. All right now, you should see more than just lotion. That's all I'm saying. Simple and sweet. All that chemicals that you see in the ingredients, you're eating that. You know, natural lotion will be taking some, like, um, virgin olive oil or something natural aloes and blaming it up you know cucumbers these things is just organic things for your body but when you put unnatural things in your body you give yourself cancer most of these things that we consider um all right to eat it'd be the trick that kills us they ain't gonna kill you with the food they're gonna kill you with the seasoning the flavoring that's the addiction so most things that is addictive, like back you heard they was putting bat shit in the Doritos or some funny thing or baby feeders in the chips. It's real. That's, you, for, for you to be addicted to something, you have to have it in you. They can't give you something foreign that is foreign to your insides. So they have to take something from you and put it into food or seasoning to make you want it. Addicted to it. So you're addicted to yourself. Same thing, crack, cocaine. Dope, weed, everything is you. You got to understand that. I just want you to know. So that's where you do all of that stuff. And all these, you got to break those cycles and use the sun, the most powerful sun, to break all of those out of you. It stops all addictions, all craving, everything go away. That should bring out just the pure consciousness in you, but you got to have time and patience. All right, let me get into this post. All right, I got a question from my homeboy. That's what we're going to call this, too. This one, we're going to call this one Simon Magnus. You know, my man, Simon Magnus, whoever it is in this um, question I'm going to ask, you know you got my name, man. You know, that's my first name, too, Simon Magnus. I represent that. I know Simon whole M-O, you understand? And it's deeper than you think. Simon and Magnus is Enki. I'm going to let you know that now because you got to know what's going on. Simon Magnus <clears throat> is the one who put Jesus in the game. Jesus is nobody. When I said nobody compared to Simon Magnus. You understand? You got to read up on Simon Magnus. This nigga got a real statue. That's where they got the name the ghetto from, the grotto. His name is Simon Grotto. And you got his, um, his wife, his shorty, who was a prostitute named Helen. They was the ones going around as Samael and Lilith, um, initiating everybody, same like I'm initiating everybody. And um, it was through them linking up in Samaria with that nigga Jesus that gave him his props. You know, Simon is also Lazarus. It's the same thing, just like Simon is the guy in Bethany with, um, that is kissing when with the alabaster jar on um, Jesus to feed and all that, it's all one person, it's all, Simon is all the pseudo characters in there, and it's about a love affair between, um, some down ass niggas who was doing some healing shit and two prostitutes, Helen and Mary Magdalene, it was a fuck thing, it's twin flames, it's all about twin flames, that's all the whole thing is about, opening to the heart chakra, but they make it in anything. But the story about Sam and Magnus ain't just motherfucking in no um, Bible. That's just the taste. They giving whatever is in the Bible, you have to go seek the information outside of it because they just giving you little samplers. But you go down like to the um, teaching of the forefathers, 
of the um, patriarchs and all that, like Clementine, Clements that was in Alexandria at the time and all them from Africa, Herodotus and all them, then they'll tell you about Simon Magnus. Simon Magnus was a magician. Uh, uh, that he, he knew all the secrets of the chakra. He'd be all the gatekeepers, and they put all their energies on him. They all covered him. Enough that this nigga was flying around all over the place like a wizard or some um, demon. Everybody thought he was a demon. Simon Magnus made up Gnosticism. He started up all of the, the that, um, religious stuff, but back then it was sorcery, wizardry. That's where Jesus learned it from, how to control demons and all that. He made it to that level. It ain't a level that you think. To control demons, you had to defeat all the gatekeepers in the underworld. And then you become, like it says in the Book of Tuat, once you defeat them, they become your protectors. So he had control over them. That's why they say he's the um, prince of the morning star. Who's the prince of the morning star? Think about it. The morning star is Venus. You got to get the whole scenario and don't be superficial with your thoughts and study more books. Moses was another ma uh, famous magician. Magic. It came, came out of Egypt. All they did, you see what they did? He was versed in um, the, the teachings of Egypt. So what do you think Moses was doing? Magic. Straight magic. Everything. Everything in there is about that and he messed up. He's the one who brought Enlil into this whole thing, messing with like a supreme level where he's messing with the stars and the planets and everything. He ain't know that every yuga has a, a presiding demon that is over it. And at one time prior to the, um, Jesus, this is when he was around, that it was opened and it opened up the gateway to let whoever it was, I don't know if it was Cali or whatever, Cali ruled for a long time. As the, as the heaven man, until I think it was even um, the Christ nigga that did it next. And how you know is when these magis come. Yes. Hold on one second. Let me pause this. Yes, like I was saying now, the magis now they come from what I'm studying. Every procession, like every. Every time a yuga go by, they come for the yuga because they know it's a presiding demon. So from what I'm studying, Jesus, um, the star that he came with, or the demon that he came with, which will be his ethereal body, is the governing right now for this whole yuga until the next yuga. Not in the sense of what we see in the image, not even in the sense of the story, but it has a... A, a realness to it. I, I mean, I don't mean to be using the European version, but I'm just telling the story. But it, it is more dated back to Egypt, so it will be more Horus or Heru is the one right now that is the one. But he still looked the same. They look the same. All of them look the same. It don't matter. But they, they, they come, like I said, from my studies. This bronze that we're talking about is neither black nor um, white or Indian or anything. Bronze is in reference when they're talking about it to when they were saying um, Zeus. You got to read the, the story of the Romans with the Zeus that made up all this shit. That they, they, um, Zeus made up four races, which was silver, bronze, um, and iron, and you know, gold being at first. It was really gold, silver, bronze, and iron. Those was the four. So the guys that's ruling now is of the bronze. That's all. So you got to get in the astral and you'll see all of it. It shows you. You see all of them. But anyways, right now people won't even understand it if I try to show you. I won't even believe it. So you'll have to see it for yourself and learn for yourself as far as that. I'm not here to convince nobody. I'm just telling y'all what it is. <clears throat> Back to this now. Magnus, Simon. Yes, yeah, that nigga is a great man, man. Tell you, man, that that, that you got to study what he what he did. If a man get a statue, and, and Jesus never got a statue, come on, that's telling you something, man. And they equate everything really to him, you know. I might do a whole little video thing on him, you know. So, anyways, <clears throat> let me finish this up. So now, the question is, I'm able to chance from my personal self to something totally else where I'm kind of feeling divine. Very hard to explain, but it's like I don't have empathy and I kind of feeling that I'm evil or something. <clears throat> or like I don't really feel 
for others, something you maybe know about. And can you help me explain if, if it's something you should explore? Well, that's an easy one, and I'm going to have fun with this. This is cool. Because, um, yeah, he's saying basically is that um, he moved up to higher being. He feels it within himself, and it's very hard to explain it. But it's like he don't have empathy and a kind of feeling that he's evil or something. Or like it don't really feel, he don't have feeling for others. All right, so let me tell you what happens when you become a higher being. Ooh, Lord, that's dangerous. Mm, I got to pause on that. Mm, mm, mm. You know why? This is why, because the, the spirits, first of all, when they come down on you, they're afraid. They're afraid of human beings. Human beings is violent. Human beings fight. So when they come down on you, it's nothing but anxiety and fear. It's not your anxiety and fear. It's their anxiety and fear because they trust in you and they're coming down to you. So whatever affects you affects them. But you're already supposed to be at a level because I do believe they foresee everything already that you're going to be able to withstand it and do the right thing to keep them under protection. So first off, after the anxiety come off, that's the empath stage. It's really dumb scared and all that stuff. That's when y'all get acquainted and you get used to the energy. It's like now your heart used to first be that 120 or whatever the regular radius, but now it moves a little like 5% faster and you feel comfortable. At first it felt uncomfortable, but this new you is, is just all right now. You got used to it. So it don't even feel like you, it was beating fast if you used beating normal. So anyways now, after this comes the next level, which is anger, the ego is going to come now. And the ego is who it is because it's everybody going to their perspective place within your body. So now the ego is going to start feeling like um, F this, F that. But it's not the ego, it's them. Because you're going to see by, by the law of divinity, as a higher being, you superior to them. Have you ever read the book of Solomon? You will see that every time he caught one of the um, 72 demons, they told him, I don't have to answer to you. Demons is high authority than you. I don't, you have to answer to me. I don't have to answer none of your questions. And they're very cocky and egotistical because of that simple fact. They run us. They are our psychic. They show us what we think we're seeing. They're the ones who provide in this whole reality for us. So we don't have say-so with them. So when it comes on to you, it has a very egotistical approach towards human beings. And if you're not able to grasp yourself and, and realize you're the consciousness and not act out of the reptilian brain, you will see that they will aggravate you or hate them. Now, it's funny. I first felt this feeling and it came over me and I started seeing like devils, evilness and all the ethereal world back then it just looked like hell because I told you it's a cloud of everything just in together so it would look like people's like help and dying and coming back alive so that's just the walls or certain part it ain't actual like that it's beings in there I learned a long from then a long time ago so now when you see all of this um <clears throat> I, I used to be very upset, very scared, very nervous, and I didn't know how to like comprehend what I was seeing. So with all of this energy that you're feeling now, this will make now everything. Hold on one second, somebody's coming. 